All right, uh, welcome everyone uh, to today's uh, Fuel Greatness Anywhere webinar. Uh, as always, my name is Josh Lightman and I'm the Youth Wellness and Communications Coordinator at the American Dairy Association, Indiana. Uh, we're very excited for you all to join us today. Uh, and we'll be uh, covering two different plays today, two new plays uh, since the last two webinars. Uh, first, our physical activity play will be all in all abilities, activate your school. And then our healthy eating play uh, that will be covered today will be fight hunger, help nourish your community. Uh, just as a, a brief overview real quick, like I said, my name is Josh Lightman and uh, I work closely with my colleague, Meg Magsiman, uh, who is the youth wellness uh, program manager. And then our guest presenter today, uh, we're uh, very fortunate to have Tara Westerkamp, who is the Indiana manager for uh, No Kid Hungry. And uh, Tara will be presenting on our healthy eating play uh, later on, and uh, Meg Magsman will kick us off with the physical activity. But before we get there, I uh, just wanted to uh, give you guys all a reminder and kind of, uh, and in case you missed it, uh, type slide here. So this past Monday, we had a, a great uh, webinar with Coach Tony Dungy, who's the former head coach for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, coach Dungy uh, joined us for a Q&A session and uh, had a great way of uh, combining kind of his experience in the community uh, with his players and, and uh, coaches and then his own family and relating it back to the importance of uh, being physically active, uh, eating healthy and, and really making sure that we uh, have our bodies in tune uh, for those uh, healthy habits later on in life. He also spoke to two important themes uh, on his end related to uncommon leadership uh, and the importance of balancing work and life, especially uh, in uh, today's kind of new normal. So uh, as always, at the end of this presentation, we will send out the slides uh, that has the direct link to that webinar. It was recorded uh, and you're more than welcome to uh, one, view it yourself and two, share it with your uh, colleagues as well uh, if, you, if you choose so. choose to do so. So to kick us off, like I said, with today's uh, Fuel Greatness Anywhere webinar, uh, we'll kick it over to Meg Magsman and she will speak to uh, the physical activity play all in all abilities, activate your school. Perfect, thanks Josh. So this is one of our six physical activity plays. Um, that's a great umbrella option of choices for you as you're seeing which option might make the most sense for your school community to be a part of Fuel to Play 60. Again, we're trying to get that 60 minutes of activity coupled with that healthy eating play and opportunity. So here, we're trying to find some really cool opportunities where you can be able to put um, programs into place or perhaps even enhance some of the great work you're already doing in your schools um, so that these activities can be ongoing, consistent. We really wanna help build you up for success. Um, so this one is pretty cool because I think it touches on something that's becoming more of a topic, all in all abilities. And thinking about abilities, it can cover things and physical limitations that might be obvious and ones that may not be. So as you have students in your class that are more shy, more reserved, um, all good things to be thinking through as you're putting new activities together to try to help pull the full class or school community together. So again, our focus is at 16 minutes of activity and making sure those students really understand how important it is, even if physical activity is not their favorite. Um, I thought it was really helpful point that our national team brings up is that there's a lot of reasons why some people aren't as active as what they could be. So they may not like the idea of going out to play. They might be someone that likes to be indoors, crafty, doing other hands-on activities. They may not like sports and can put physical activity and sports together and just think that's not them. Or perhaps there are physical challenges that get in the way too. So being cognizant that there's a lot of things, obviously, as we all know, that people are bringing to those situations and those classrooms um, and trying to find good fits and good variety over the course of the year to help include everyone. Um, and then the hope is that in doing so, you can really find what works for your group and your school to help break down those barriers so that they understand and get excited about the idea of being active, whether it's at school or obviously at home as well. And a cool piece that we thought was really great is finding ways for your students to be active and leading these efforts. So maybe you have student leaders in your group who could help brainstorm like, hey, let's try this. I know this person likes doing this activity. Let's do that. Um, another cool approach is the buddy system. So where you have those kids that are more comfortable trying new things that are maybe more social, they can be the ones going out within the group and kind of grouping with them and say, hey, why don't we try this today? 
or I haven't tried this before either. Let's do it together. And that could be some really great opportunities for your group to consider. Here's pictures of just simple activities. The first one is an activity that we had recorded over the summer of just being able to create an obstacle course. The boys here made their own obstacle course that they thought would be fun to do. And then they challenged each other to do it over and over. The other one is from one of the schools of the week that we have where they were putting um, the heart um, rate monitors on and trying different activities and figuring out where they're getting the most um, active um, energy and excitement from. And so obviously their school was lucky enough to have a pool. So that was one of their pieces that they were rotating through. Uh, Meg, before I uh, go forward, I think one of the yeah. uh, really great things about, uh, Meg will be modest about this, but those are her two boys in the, in the top yeah. photo. And I think one of the great things about the obstacle course that they created is not only uh, is it able um, to you know happen normally, but they use chalk so that it's something that'll work uh, within, you know, hopefully the COVID guidelines at your school as well uh, as True. at home with maybe some of the uh, neighborhood kids too. Again, being outside, being able to socially distance, uh, and then obviously uh, if it's something uh, you feel uh, better with your child wearing a mask, that works too. So just overall, yeah. a, a well-rounded activity that that really works uh, in the normal and new normal uh, times. Of the <laughs> well put, I agree. Here we wanted to put some more ideas and examples together, just thinking that it might help draw some new options or ideas. Um, the calisthenics are obviously something easy to do, whether in the classroom, I know our kids' physical activity is coming into the classroom, and if it's days where weather is not warm, they have to stay there. So can they do, you know, do their chair sits or wall sits or other simple activities? This video we have here is a really cute one up on our friend Blue U's as, um, YouTube page, where they're doing simple activities with our friend Buttercup um, that could be fun um, and easy to do or just brown some ideas. And the next one is fitness stations. So what's nice about this is obviously you have the variety. So um, one station could be something that's a little bit more athletic, others aren't. So it gives students some variety, obviously. Obstacle course follows the same kind of thought there. Um, small equipment. This is something that one of our um, Fuel Up to Play 60 schools up in Porter County does. And it's through their special education school altogether where they like having that small equipment so that if you have a student that's wheelchair bound, you know, they can still be hands on, they can throw the ball and they have some things they can do. So sometimes the big equipment is overwhelming or it's too hard for the whole class to be engaged, but having smaller pieces they find works out really well for them. Um, going back to that next option on the list is heart rate monitors to compare the different activities. And then our friends in Porter County also have a walking club and they've had this for years. And even if some of the students aren't walking, it's getting them all going and interacting and in a social way that just gives them that little break for the day. And then they come right back in and then they're just geared up and ready to continue on with their day. So some really great ideas that we've heard from a number of the schools we work with on things that have worked well for them that we wanted to make sure we passed along. So um, that wraps up things here from the physical activity side, but we have our friend Tara here that we thought would be a great resource for those that don't know we're already connected to No Kid Hungry. So here, this play that we have within Fuel Up to Play 60 on the healthy eating side is that fight hunger, help nourish your community. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this. So Tara, we'd love to hear some ideas from you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, American Dairy Association of Indiana is such a great partner and um, I just love everything that you guys do and provide for our schools. So, hey guys, I'm Tara. Um, I am uh, with No Kid Hungry Indiana. We have a um, campaign is what we would call it in Indiana and it's specifically focused on school nutrition. Uh, our nationwide focus is obviously the in childhood hunger that you can see here on the slide. Um, if at any point you want to ask me a question, my email is up on the screen and you'll get it later too. Feel free to email me. Okay, next. <laughs> um, so just kind of overview of what we do. It is a lot about um, fighting hunger and helping to reduce that, working with uh, stakeholders like American Dairy Association of Indiana. And um, we do that as a team aspect and um, we do all of the things you see on the screen, but we couldn't do it without um, partners, 
uh, statewide, but also community and like the holistic approach to the school system. I know a lot of you are probably PE teachers or nurses, or you have some different perspective that um, like I wouldn't, I'm from the food service side. So working together to help kids um, to not uh, experience hunger and providing more access is a great thing to do. So um, school nutrition is so important. Many of you, I'm sure, are aware of that. Um, but I wanted to provide you some data, especially if you're trying to present your idea or you know, the, the um, uh, grant information. Um, I wanted to provide you data so that you could present that to your principal or to ad administration, and you have that in your back pocket to kind of, um, this is why it's important. So yeah, next. Um, so one thing to always think about when doing um, this play is that this play could also um, interact with other plays um, that are available. And so you can see on this screen um, that No Kid Hungry does work in all these areas um, because they are school nutrition, but also uh, your play in fighting hunger can also intersect with all of these food, um, federal food programs. So that's breakfast, after school snack, supper, uh, summer meals. And then, you know, also increasing the awareness or the outreach to um, families that are SNAP or on WIC. Um, that is always helpful for them to know what's out there. And um, even like as simple as providing uh, translation on things that you have, whether that's um, like what uh, Meg was talking about earlier about an activity, making sure they have that ability to know what's going on. Next. So um, this is all about breakfast. Um, we have a lot of data on breakfast, um, but from what you can see here, breakfast is important. Um, when kids come to school uh, hungry, this is what happens that we've got, gleaned this information from teachers. So three out of four educators see students regularly come to school hungry. Um, they're just not able to get enough food at home. 57% of teachers regularly buy food for students. And uh, then lastly, about $300 is the amount of um, teacher's own money that they spend for buying food for students. Um, that's amazing that so many of our teachers are willing and go the extra mile, but I think there's a lot of ways we can collaborate and try to get, whether that's the school nutrition breakfast program or the lunch program, or maybe a supper program to help these families and these kiddos get um, some, some nutritious meals. Next. Um, these are other stats that you could utilize. Um, Breakfast really is important and uh, we have these up here that you show that kiddos that eat breakfast on a daily basis have higher test scores. They are more likely to attend school and then lastly, more likely to graduate. It's very important um, that, that, you know, relates to the success of the, our students' academics. Um, it also relates to behavioral. And I have a quote here in a few that you'll see that um, a school, her title is school advisor, but she also acts like a counselor. Go ahead to the next one. Um, for a inner city school district, and they have found like breakfast in the classroom is just one part of their uh, trauma informed brain to line intervention. So what they do with breakfast in the classroom is they make it a holistic approach with the, the teacher starting um, a personal relationship with the student. And they create this um, great environment for the students to start creating relationships with each other, with the teachers. And it just has shown over several years of how calmer um, their kids are, how better behaved they are. And it's just a really great start to the day. They really enjoy it. So um, what I wanted to kind of move on here is um, to, to kind of give you guys, we have support too for schools across the state. Um, next. And so uh, we are doing um, many things with statewide partners uh, to strive to connect kids to school nutrition programs across Indiana by educating and, and engaging key stakeholders and identifying, developing, and sharing resources, trainings, and best practices. Mm -hmm. So if you ever want to go down this road farther um, on ending childhood hunger or providing this play, you can always reach out to me and I can help you in that area. Um, these are just our regional task force. If you wanted to be involved, I'd love to have you. Feel free to reach out once again. Next. And these, this slide will be sent to you later. You can click on these. Um, the ones to think about are the resources and toolkits link that takes you to our website. You can find all kinds of um, ideas and options there, as well as the technical assistance that'll just generate an email for you um, that goes straight to me. 
Um, once again, these are just resources. I just want to make sure you have them um, at your fingertips. These are COVID related resources that we have on our website with this link. Next. And then back to school, you can um, see this link to get our webinar series that we had for a month. Mm -hmm. These are just our current partners. And before I jump off, I just wanted to make sure that everyone had some ideas of how to utilize this, this um, play. I did talk about the actual federal programs that are out there like school, breakfast, or lunch, but there are other ways um, that you can utilize this um, play very well within your school or your school district. Um, a couple of those would be to initiate or start a school pantry. That can be done um, with this play, but you could also think about how to involve a community stakeholder like a food bank or a food shelter that could act as that other community engagement with that piece. Uh, another thing would be a weekend. Um, you might hear a weekend food program or a backpack program, but this is a great way to make sure all of our kiddos um, have um, food and nutritious food over the weekend when school's not in session. Um, once again, I would always reach out to maybe like a Purdue Extension or a local food bank. Um, there are all other kinds of local stakeholders at your community level that would be more than happy to be involved um, because there's a lot of the logistics that go into that, like packing the bags, getting the food, um, finding volunteers that would maybe um, take the food or the prepacked meals um, to the schools that could be handed out from there. Um, other things to think about in terms of how this play could be utilized in your area would be, like I said, the program awareness. That, that It sounds really simple, but um, it, it really goes a long way if, one, you have flyers or posts or something that um, are, are in various languages. Um, also, you might have to think about various um, modes, so not all school districts um, or not all families have access to Wi-Fi or internet. So maybe if you post them or if you do something like that, they're not gonna get it. So what are some ways that you can just do to simply say, hey, these are the things that are provided in your community and we want you to know about them. So that sounds simple, but it really goes a long way. Um, so these are some great things that you could, um, you know, marinate on and see what works for your uh, schools and your families. But um, I am here to help and I'm so thank you thankful to have the time to talk with you guys today. Thank you very much, Tara. We definitely appreciate you uh, joining us uh, today and, and sharing your knowledge, uh, not only on uh, you know, food insecurity, but you know, ways to activate this play uh, again, in, in, a, in a normal world and then our new normal today as well. Uh, I think that uh, Tara may, you know, provided a lot of great ideas about uh, having this play work with other healthy eating plays and then uh, you know, gave those ideas at the end as well about just exactly how you could execute this again uh, in a normal and our new normal today. Um, but I think that you know this this play really hits home with the whole nutrition arm uh, side of Fuel Up to Play 60, and really provides the opportunity uh, for you all as program advisors not only to engage your students and help them understand the importance of uh, proper nutrition and, and kind of healthy eating, healthy habits, but really help uh, you know their parents and, and just the general community around you. Uh, as well to, again, hopefully instill those healthy habits, uh, you know, in everyone and, and really reach, uh, you know, more than just uh, your students and, and make a lasting impact uh, on them and then your surrounding community as well. Hey, Josh, before you go on, I'm sorry, I had one yeah. other thought. <laughs> um, Josh mentioned adults um, getting meals. This would be a great play to, in, to activate for, um, for families that are picking up maybe your child's meal at, at a curbside or delivery type of thing for their lunch or breakfast but adults under the USDA federal program cannot get uh, reimbursed meals, if you wanna call it that way. So maybe this play would just be able to provide adults or a family meal um, with, along with the child's meal through the federal program. That's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ted. And I think what, just one other point I wanted to make as well is, um, you know, it's not, to execute this play, it's not limited to the ideas that you've heard uh, Tara mention today or, or that you, uh, you know, read on our handouts. Really, this is just a kind of a guide as to uh, pointing you in the right direction. So if you have an idea uh, on a way to activate this play and it hasn't been mentioned or you haven't heard of it being uh, done before, please feel free to reach out to Meg or myself. Uh, we're always open to, to helping and, and providing feedback as well. And then, you know, if you're looking to eventually apply for grant funding as well, and, and you have an idea again that is a little bit different, please feel free to reach out to us, bounce the idea off us and uh, will help provide you feedback and uh, you know continue to, to guide you in the right direction.
Thank you again, Tara. We appreciate you uh, joining us. Just uh, kind of heading towards a wrap up here. Uh, as always, this is kind of our, uh, our reminder slide. So uh, don't forget to check out the Fuel Up to Play 60 homeroom. That's a new resource this year. Uh, that's on fueluptoplay60.com. Uh, it's updated every Thursday and they have different um, rooms that uh, align with uh, different, like, different areas of uh, fuel your good. So uh, you know, good for your planet and uh, free play and things like that. I know Quentin was our player ambassador, Quentin Nelson. I uh, just had a, a brief uh, question and answer uh, piece on the uh, the free uh, the free play area. So uh, feel free to check that out. It's pretty cool. And there's also prizes available uh, as well as you uh, make your way through that and, and uh, check out all the new features that they have. Uh, another new um, thing that we've come up with is a Program Advisor Facebook page. So this is dedicated to you all as program advisors for Fuel Up to Play 60. Uh, we encourage you to join it. It's You're welcome to share ideas, uh, post questions. I know Megan and myself are on there helping uh, moderate. There's also news about uh, grants and different webinars and other activities that'll be uh, coming up and, and different promotions and things like that. Uh, that link along with um, uh, the slide deck and the recording and things like that will be sent to you uh, in a follow-up email uh, later this week. Uh, and then as always each year, we like to uh, uh, feature schools of the week. So our school of the week uh, is, are those schools that kind of go above and beyond that are able to, to execute those Fuel Up to Play 60 plays, uh, encourage their students to uh, you know, eat healthy, be physically active. Uh, and you can find examples of kind of, of the schools that we've featured before uh, on uh, the Colts website. They have their uh, a page dedicated to Fuel Up to Play 60 and all of the past schools of the week. Now this year, because it's a little bit different with COVID, we'll uh, be doing it slightly differently with uh, photos and then uh, featured text, but you can check out some of the videos as well. We'll share that link with you uh, coming up. But if you uh, have an upcoming event and would like to be considered for a School of the Week, please feel free to, to email myself uh, at uh, lightman at winnersdrinkmilk.com. That'll be uh, provided again in the follow-up email as well. I will turn it back over to Meg for a fun subway promotion that she will share with us. Yes, and this is a pretty cool opportunity that's nationwide at participating um, subways, but we understand it really is most of them. Um, they have two really great offers that are meant to help support Fuel Up to Play 60 and families um, that might have some additional needs. First one is the 60 cent six inch sub Sundays. It's not easy to say <laughs> clearly, uh, but it's a cool opportunity where you can go online and you can actually access this through fueluptoplay6c.com. They have it right now on the homepage. It's one of the sliders, but you can get to this very cool tracker. And so the kids can go through and on their own be keeping track of what they're eating and making good choices over the course of the five days and then bring it into a subway on an upcoming Sunday and they can get a 60 cent sandwich when an adult purchases one. So just a cool thing for the kids to be thinking about it and then realize they get a cool reward. Um, this promotion is going to be going on through the end of the year. So my goodness, print a few of these out, share them with family if you'd like. Um, it's a really cool thing, just encouraging the kids to be active um, and on their own thinking through these types of choices. The other one is a cool thing that anyone can do. So hoping to help tackle hunger. And what they're doing is simply accepting donations added to the end of your uh, cost of your meal at Subway. And that money donation will be kept right here in your part of the state of Indiana to be used for more programs for the schools and for wellness purposes. So this is opportunities to help fund some of these cool programs like what you're seeing with these um, hunger initiatives through Fuel Up to Play 60 right in your own backyard. So just a cool opportunity. We wanted to make sure that you were aware of by all means, share out with those in your school or in your neighborhood and friends and family because they can do some really neat impact when you put all of us together. And then just to kind of wrap things up. So just a reminder, like Josh was saying, we'll be sending out afterwards the recording of this, um, some of the materials that we've been talking about, even an evaluation. And we'd love any feedback you could share. We do have prizes that we're gonna be sending out because we love sharing prizes. So uh, one of which is this example of Quentin Nelson, if you haven't received it, we're certainly glad to share some with you. Uh, to have in your school and have fun with as the kids try to measure up to an all pro bowl lineman for the Colts. So pretty cool thing. Um, so we really appreciate the time to, to give us feedback and then to share this out. 
Uh, just a quick addition, uh, Meg. Uh, yeah. Even if you've already uh, filled out the evaluation for our past two webinars, uh, please uh, uh, provide us feedback again. We're always looking uh, to create better content for you all. And if you've uh, already completed the evaluation once and have received a Quentin Nelson growth poster uh, and do not want another one, we have other uh, gear that we'd like to send you as well. <laughs> if you do want another one, we're happy to send you uh, an additional one as well. Uh, I know I like to measure each morning to see how I if I've grown and caught up to BQ yet. So um, please, uh, please, please provide us uh, feedback. It, it's definitely helpful and it'll make That's it right. uh, worthwhile for you guys uh, in future webinars as well. That's perfect. I love that you're measuring yourself every day against Quentin. Josh, well done, it's, friend. <laughs> little by little, we're getting there. As long as I drink my milk, uh, we'll be good. So. You too can be 6'5". <laughs> um, we did want to just share, we do have a final uh, webinar of this series, but we're going to wait till after the new year. Um, give everyone some time. Please be with your families and enjoy um, just a little break from, from the everyday. Um, and when we come back, hopefully a bit refreshed, uh, we'd love to bring everyone back together in February to talk about two of the last plays we really wanted to highlight and go over some cool thoughts for. First one being breakfast for everyone. The timing of this is perfect because beginning of March is National School Breakfast Week. So our hope is to arm you with some cool ideas and initiatives that your school and program can be thinking of. Um, for the physical activity, we'll be talking about in-class physical activity breaks, knowing that, my goodness, they're good for all of us, kids and adults alike. So more things to look forward to coming up there. Absolutely. Now, uh, before uh, we have a, a few minutes left here, um, if anyone has any uh, questions for, for Tara, Meg, or myself, please feel free uh, to type them into the chat box now and submit them. Uh, like Meg said, our, our next webinar will be in, in February and really looking to get geared up uh, for National School Breakfast Week. Uh, hopefully it'll look somewhat similar to what we've done in years past, but uh, regardless of what it does look like, uh, we want to see how you all celebrate. Uh, we want to support you in your uh, celebration of National School Breakfast Week. Uh, and you know we want to celebrate too by sharing the great things that you all are doing. So uh, as you start to prepare for National School Breakfast Week, uh, please feel free again to, if you want support or, or help on ideas of, of execution on, on our end, please feel free to reach out uh, to Meg or myself. Uh, again, we love to, to see the things that you all are doing. So if you uh, end up uh, having an event before or during uh, that time, please send us photos, uh, videos, and we'll, we'll feature you all on our social media. So. Uh, as we look forward uh, to the new year, it doesn't look like we have any questions for the rest of uh, today, but we want to, again, say thank you for uh, attending today's webinar, uh, some of the past webinars too, if you've uh, been able to catch those. Uh, we wish you all the best in, in finishing up 2020. Uh, I know that uh, at the office, Meg and I uh, said 2021, it's going to look like a lot of fun. So uh, we're hoping uh, uh, that 2021 can hold out to that. I uh, wish you guys all the best and hope to uh, see you guys again. Uh, here in February. So thank you very much and hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, day and week. Thank you. Bye, Appreciate guys. it.